And John Phillips recent article titled Welcome All to the United States of San Francisco was published in the Orange County Register earlier this week. In the article, he details how San Francisco politicians have made their way into two of the three top three political positions in the country, potentially. He joins us now to discuss more about uh, this piece. John, good morning to you. Thanks for joining us. Good morning, and just a warning, the gardeners that were just in your live shot are now at my neighbor's house. Oh, <laughs> man. All right. Fly well, I'm, I'm hoping you have really good insulated windows there. <laughs> so, first of all, for people who are unfamiliar, you uh, are a radio host. You have the John Phillips Show on uh, 790 AM radio, and uh, you are a columnist also for the Orange County Register. Are you, I know you often talk about uh, politics. You used to be a sports guy. Is, is this a conservative talk show that you that you host what yeah i mean my politics are right of center uh not on every subject under the sun but that's certainly where i i line up uh but but this is something where it's not just a, a partisan slant that that affects the people of california and the people of the country it's a geographic slant because People in San Francisco don't live like us in San Diego and Los Angeles. The city is the size of a postage stamp. It's a big vertically built city and they have different demands and different needs. But one little click in that tiny itty bitty city has taken over California politics. I mean, if you think about it, the governor's a former mayor of San Francisco. Both U.S. senators are from San Francisco. Nancy Pelosi is from San Francisco. The state treasurer is from San Francisco. And before they threw him in the clink for gun running, Leland Yee could have been our secretary of state from San Francisco. And now they've expanded. And Joe Biden, if elected, would have a San Franciscan Kamala Harris next in line to be president, and then Nancy Pelosi after her. And you think about it, you got an 80 year old guy with a social security number of four and two San Francisco's San Francisco politicians behind him. They have not only taken over state politics at this point, that machine could take over American politics. OK, well, let me let me just throw out the argument that I don't really care what little town you come from in the United States, so long as everybody seems to be prospering and benefiting from it. But you clearly lay out in your article here that as, as we are adopting policies of San Francisco, we are also seeing the problems that San Francisco has, most notably a skyrocketing housing that is quite frankly just unaffordable to anybody, a homeless problem that's exploding, drug use that's rampant, and and that has to be looked at closely, is, is, is your argument in this? Absolutely. I mean, I, I remember as a child, I've lived in the state of California my entire life, and um, I'm an Angel fan, and we used to go to Angel games on the road, and we'd go up to San Francisco and Oakland and watch the Angels lose. And we'd notice all the homeless people, and we'd notice the, the feces and the needles, and it was nothing like Southern California. And now you go through the streets of Anaheim or the streets of San Diego or the streets of Los Angeles or, or any number of other cities in the state, and they look like San Francisco. So not only have they exported their politics and their, their policy proposals, they've exported their problems to the rest of the state. And look, I mean, if they go national, that could go to Iowa, too. I thought one of the most compelling parts, uh, really what I find most interesting, I guess, when, when we look at the, the divisiveness of the country and how polarized we are right now, one of the interesting things that you highlighted in your article was uh, this this idea that that Bill Clinton, as he spoke to uh, the Democratic National Convention, was limited to five minutes and was not given prime time because, and um, I believe it was Hillary Clinton's uh, campaign manager who who said he's not the Democrat that we're now seeing with the same Democratic Party. It's just a different party. Oh yes, and Bill Clinton has gone from playing the showroom to playing the lounge. Um, not only was he limited to five minutes, but he wasn't on any of the networks. I mean, he was before, uh, you know, ABC, NBC, CBS picked up the speed. So if you're watching one of the cable channels or you're watching online, uh, you could see him. But but they want him in the witness protection program. They wouldn't let him anywhere near those prime time hours. And it's because his politics are too conservative for where they are. It doesn't jive with the San Francisco politics that has taken over that party.
In fact, um, Patty Solis Doyle, uh, Hillary Clinton's campaign manager, said uh, in regards to Bill Clinton and this whole idea, and I'm quoting your article, uh, she says, he ran much more as a conservative. He governed much more as a conservative. The party now has moved further to the left than it has ever been. I think his time as a politician has passed. Wow. Yeah, how ice cold is that? <laughs> I want to know if there's a history between the two of them where they had a fight somewhere in the past because that was that's something that you would typically see in a in a uh, in a newspaper article that said by unnamed sources. She said that in the paper and attached her name to it. And she's not some like random aide. Patty Solis Doyle was Hillary Clinton's campaign manager. And that's what she's saying publicly. So you know it's not just Patty Solis Doyle speaking out of school. Uh, that's something that, that many people in the party share. Well, John, it was a, a really thought-provoking article, and we, uh, we thank you for talking to us this morning and getting your thoughts behind it. Appreciate the time. And the gardeners didn't even bother us. Yeah, the hedges are done, I just saw. Good. <laughs> well, it was a, the sound was perfect. So thank you so much for your time this morning. Appreciate it. Thank you. Take care.